Hey guys, welcome back to part two. This is how I turboed my E36. Today, we'll be covering the turbo, the engine, as well as the oil and cooling systems for the car, um, what I did to them and why. So let's go ahead and get started with the turbo. So when it comes to turbo choices, there's a lot for E36s out there. There's the obvious expensive ones like Garrett, uh, Precision, but this is what I went with here. I went with the eBay special, but yeah, pretty much it's a GT35. Um, it's got a T3 housing. Uh, for the for the exhaust um, it's anti-surge which is pretty cool that means I don't need to buy a blow-off valve for this car um, it'd probably still be a good idea to buy one but I think uh, I think the anti-surge part of the turbo should be good enough um, I wasn't even planning on getting a blow-off valve just because I like the noise I'm a riser like that <laughs> but this is my turbo of choice um, I went with this turbo like I said because of budget it was 200 bucks it's a gt35 i'm pretty sure that's a clone of some of the more expensive brands the only concerns that i have about it is the size i'm hoping it's not too big because if it's too big then there's going to be a lot of lag and i don't want lag but the upside to it is it'll have enough boost it'll spool up quickly enough hopefully with the um with the electronic boost controller hopefully that'll help control the spool up time i'll be able to really push it and turn up the boost as i go i'm only going to start with about 10 psi boost see where we're at and then slowly start notching it up and i'm pretty sure this turbo is going to be able to take that i anticipate this turbo having no problems whatsoever uh taking it up to 20 psi even 30 psi i'm not going to take it that far but i think this turbo will be able to take us all the way um but if it doesn't, then it's no big deal. Uh, I'll just replace it and buy another one. Um, that's the beauty of buying parts off eBay. Uh, they're really cheap and I think they're they're really good for, for doing testing and stuff like that. Uh, some other things I bought related to this is the first, the titanium T3 fiber turbo blanket heat shield barrier, turbocharger cover wrap. That's a handful to say. Uh, so yeah, it's only 20 bucks. Um, not too sure how well this is gonna work to be honest. Um, but if it does what it's supposed to do, if it's genuinely titanium, this is going to keep a lot of heat out of the engine bay. It's also going to hopefully help spool up the turbo as all the heat's going to be uh, maintained within the turbine itself. As the heat increases within the turbine, the back pressure would also increase, so causing a faster spool up time. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this can do that for me. So let's talk the intake. So the intake filter I chose was this one here. Uh, it's it's not even a really it's not it's not a filter really. It's more of like a piece of mesh. Yeah, it's actually more expensive than the turbo blanket, which is which is pretty funny. Um, it just looks like some screened home material. Uh, I'm not expecting too much out of this, obviously. The only reason why I went with this was simply because there's not enough room in the engine compartment to to really fit um, like a cone style air filter. So that's why I went with this. Um, I'm, and also, I'm not really too concerned with with debris going inside the turbo. I, I think it's going to be fine. Like the hood's going to be closed. Uh, I, I I just don't see anything other than like maybe dust getting through. But uh, you know, whatever drift car stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's not the best option, but it's the only thing that fits, and it's it's uh, honestly better than nothing. All right, so moving on, let's talk about the engine and what I did to it. So. For the engine, my goal was pretty much just the bare minimum. I didn't want to upgrade any of the internals. I wanted to keep it stock. If you look online, you'll see that most people recommend keeping it stock, at least for a budget build. Supposedly the bottom end of these engines are uh, overbuilt and they can take a lot of power. And plus it's an inline six. Inline sixes are generally known for reliability. So my plan was keep the stock bottom end and just throw in a head gasket and some studs and call it a day. So that's exactly what I did. So for the ARP head studs, this is the part number for them. Um, I bought them off Amazon. These are the ones, the exact same ones that I used. One thing to know about these studs is if you notice the little uh, nuts are 12 point, which requires a special socket. This is what I use, it's a Tekton 3 8 inch drive, 12 millimeter deep, 12 point socket. It's just thin enough. If you decide to do this with the camshafts left on the engine, it's a real pain in the butt. I would actually recommend taking off the camshafts. I, I didn't because I'm lazy. I, I was actually able to make it work, but it's it's it really is a pain in the butt. It's gonna make this take a lot longer than it really should. Um, but if you wanna worry about taking them off, 
then this is a really good option. Um, even even still, I would recommend picking up the socket. It's cheap, you know, and uh, it'll get the job done for sure. All right, so for the head gasket of choice, I went with a VAC Motorsports MLS head gasket. This is the one right here. It's actually kind of funny story of how I picked it up. Um, if you look at the bore size slash thickness, there's a lot of different options to choose from actually. There's a lot of different thicknesses. There's an actual spacer in between the head gasket and it, it ranges from different sizes, which makes it pretty tricky to figure out what's the right size that you need. Uh, I didn't know what size I needed. I checked a lot of the forums and a lot of people have a bunch of different opinions. So it just makes things even more confusing. Um, so I actually ended up uh, emailing them and uh, I hit them up and they, they actually responded and they're recommended between 98 thousandths of an inch to 140 thousandths of an inch. Um, this is again, if you're deciding to keep the bottom end stock. Um, so keep that in mind. They actually gave me a cool piece of info. They said that every 10 thousandths of an inch um, thicker of the material for the head gasket drops the combustion ratio by about 0.25 so a quarter so the sock head gasket on these cars is about 60 to 70 thousandths of an inch as well as the combustion ratio being 10 and a half to one effectively since i chose 120 thousandths of an inch it should decrease the combustion ratio down to about nine to nine and a quarter to one so i'm no expert on uh, finding the proper combustion ratio uh, for boosted applications for m50s i just pretty much went off their recommendations um, I'm gonna go ahead and trust them. Uh, they recommended between 98 thousandths to 140 thousandths of an inch. So I just pretty much went in between the middle. I stuck with 120 and we're just gonna run it and see what happens. So moving on, one thing to note, it's a really good idea anytime you do some kind of head gasket replacement, either an MLS aftermarket stuff, or you decide to do something stock um, to get the cylinder head resurfaced at a machine shop. I ended up doing that with this car ended up costing me about, I think it was like 140 bucks, 140. And for this specific build, with the new head gasket, um, VAC Motorsports recommends applying a small amount of sealant to the timing cover, um, right in between the timing cover and the, um, the engine block. I didn't do that, but just so you guys know, um, don't be like me uh, and forget to do it. It's all put back together now, and I'm honestly just too lazy to do it. Uh, if you don't, it just ends up uh, causing an oil leak. Uh, but I think it'll be fine for now. Oh, and one more thing to note. I highly recommend taking the engine out before you do any of this. Um, I did it with the block still inside the car. Putting the cylinder head in is a real pain in the butt when you decide to do it that way. If you take it out, um, putting the studs on, and then putting the head on top, the head itself weighs like 70 pounds. so. Don't break your back bending over trying to install the cylinder head. I had a, I had a buddy help me out with it because it's just way too fucking heavy. Um, yeah, highly recommend taking the engine out before you do any of this work and then putting it back in afterwards. That'll save you a lot of trouble. Let's talk oil and cooling. Uh, for these two, I kept them pretty simple. That's why I've been clumped up together. Uh, first, I'll cover the oil side and then the cooling side. So let's start with the oil side first. Okay, so let's talk turbo feed lines. Um, for the turbo feed, I actually went with a couple of products off of Rally Road. Um, if you don't know who they are, they sell a lot of great turbo related products for E36s and specifically as well as other BMWs. The one really cool thing they sell is this little fitting that goes right in between the banjo bolt of the Vanos line to the oil filter. They also sell the oil line that goes from there all the way to the turbo. So those are two things taken care of. And for the oil drain, I just purchased some 10 a.m. lines off of uh, Amazon. It's pretty neat. You can get a lot of hose as well as a bunch of different fittings. Uh, another thing I recommend is picking up um, the Vibrant uh, Vice Jaws, or they're like aluminum Vice Jaws that are made specifically for AN fittings. It just makes it a lot easier to uh, create AN lines because um, they can be kind of a pain since they're like super tight. I know I struggled with it for a bit uh, just because it's my first time messing around with it. At the, the Vibrant uh, Vice Jaws work pretty well for that. So the biggest challenge is definitely uh, welding on the bung for the 10 a in line to go down and return the oil back into the engine oil pan. It's really only a pain in the butt because of like a jillion different bolts that BMW decided to use to hold up the oil pan. Um, it takes a long time to take them off. It's a pain in the butt. 
uh, but you just gotta kind of deal with it. One thing that I did while I was down there was actually repair the oil pan. Um, I had a lot of cracks and my oil pan was leaking like crazy. So it was actually pretty cool. I had a chance to repair it, but uh, even though I repaired it, it's still, it's still leaking. So, you know, normal working condition right there. But yeah, all you really have to do is just drop the pan uh, drill out a hole for the uh, for the bung to fit onto and then just fold it in place and it's good to go uh, It's simple. It's just a pain in the butt because of all the bolts really um, And you have to know how to weld aluminum One thing that I think is also a pretty good idea is picking up a heat sleeve for the AN line uh, Only because you know, there's a lot of heat down there and you don't want that AN line melting or bursting or you know what have you okay so i think that wraps up everything for the oil system um so let's talk cooling so in my eyes the cooling lines for the turbo aren't really going to be that needed first thing you know it's a cheap turbo so if it ends up blowing up uh it's not the biggest deal in the world and second thing um, since it's already cluttered over there with all the stuff that's in the way the turbo wastegate uh, all the different lines um Having coolant lines on top of all that, it just it just makes things more confusing and then you have to figure out how to route them and stuff. I just wanted to keep that simple, so I just ended up deleting it and just putting some bolts where the where the fitting should go on for the turbo. And then other than that, all I really did to the cooling system was upgrade the reservoir, just because the plastic reservoirs like to melt a lot. Uh, so the Mishimoto ones are actually really nice for that. It's a high quality part for sure. I also have a pretty big radiator on the car. It's a funny story, I actually got it from a pick and pull out of all things. It's pretty cool, I ended up picking up that radiator for like 40 bucks. It's actually pretty sketchy, it just barely fits. Uh, you can tell that the fan is like a millimeter away from scraping up against it. And the only thing that's holding it in place are zip ties. Um, at some point I'm definitely gonna have to make brackets for it. That kind of sums up everything. One thing that I do kind of want to get is a oil cooler. It's something that I do plan on doing. Uh, if I do, I'll probably end up making a video about it or something. Alright, so I think I uh, covered everything for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you made it through to the end of the video, thank you for watching. Um, I would really appreciate it if you guys show me some support. And I'll see you guys in part 3.